Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. All right, welcome to 10 Minutes With. Um, I'm not doing an influence chain for this particular video, so this is just a one-off, but um, I had seen lots of requests for Sergio Topi, and it had been a while since I had done a Topi video. There are three others on my channel um, from a few years back, but uh, Topi's great. He's highly influential. I mean, he could definitely fit into an influence chain moving forward. But um, let's just get right into this because I'm really going to try to keep this to 10 minutes. And um, his work is amazing. Um, I'll show you the book cover that these came from. A few years ago, I was at San Diego Comic Con actually doing a live stream for my YouTube channel. And I was at a European book uh, seller's table. And there was like five new books I had never seen, five or six. And um, this is one of them. Uh, but you'll see the cover in a minute. This is like a splash page in it. Um, so Topi has a very stylized line. He's known for um, his um, rendering, his overall draftsmanship, and um, he's just a phenomenal uh, comic book artist. He's an Italian. Um, he does sequential art. Um, he does tons and tons of illustration work. And in particular, I would say in the last 10 years, he's become more and more popular in American comics um, as an influenced artist. Maybe even 15 now. Time kind of flies. But uh, yeah, there was a point where, where honestly, like I had a couple of friends that knew his work. But other than that, he definitely was not in the mainstream consciousness. Um, and then sometime in the early 2000s, more and more people started to pick up on his work. We got lucky. There was a, a art dealer out of L.A., comic de or a, a book dealer out of L.A. named Tony Raiola, which I always mention um, when I do videos on Topi, that uh, sold his work, Michaluzzi, Dino Battaglia, and all these these artists. And this is like pre-Sean Gordon Murphy and a lot of the artists that, that uh, started to incorporate some of these techniques. Um, and... Uh, yeah, Tony would always hook us up. We would we would make a pilgrimage to his table at Comic Con and be like, "What do you have, Tony?" <laughs> he was cool. He was this little. Uh, yeah, hopefully he's still alive. He was a little Italian guy, um, but really awesome. But yeah, he'd be like, "You wanted a topi?" We're like, "Hell yeah, we want the topi. Bring it!" <laughs> oh man, such fun memories. But yeah, it was myself, Libra Mayho, and Carlos Tienda. We're way way into topi, but. It's just amazing work. I mean, his lines are so crazy um, and so cool looking too. And in fact, I don't normally do this, but I'll show you two pieces that I did many, many years ago um, that are inspired by Topi and Drew Struzan. Um, it was, I had an idea to try to mix Struzan with Topi. <laughs> Because Topi kind of kind of lays stuff out in, in a movie poster way. Not, not like on all those pages, but man, stuff is so cool. But uh yeah, I'll, I'll break those out a little further into the video, just real quick. If it affects the 10 minutes, I'll go over a minute or two for you all. <laughs> These are great scans, too. This is like, I mean, you can see the pencil, which is always exciting to me. I'm always down for um, uh, being able to get a peek into the process. Look at this little, little smears here. It's a nice touch. Yeah, I didn't. I don't really know too many artists that don't like Topi. So if you're an art fan, um, you're either already a fan or you're seeing his work for the first time, and probably will be a fan. He's got lots of great books. I'm a big fan of his color work. I don't have a ton of the color work in this particular video, but if you, um, I'll put links to the three other videos in the description box if you want to check them out. But um, uh, yeah, you know. One is ironically called Influence Chain, believe it or not. And this was way before I ever had the inkling to do anything like that. But it was uh, connected to my work. In fact, after this one, I'll pull up my two pieces and show them just really fast. And, th and, and honestly, those pieces that I'm going to show were um, really before I had started penciling, seriously. But So here are my pieces. So I did this one first. Um, I'd been a big fan of like African... Um, design for a while just when i would hunt around online i i kind of started checking out african art and african design and stuff like that and i really liked it and so um this was the first one that i did but i mean you can see this isn't the highest resolution scan but you can see the topi style line work um you know obviously i used reference for these characters um and uh you kind of did like like i said a little bit of a stacking thing kind of like how drew struzan would do some interesting like line work in here and i didn't have a t i didn't have a topi comic or anything out when i did this i just did it 
Um, but but I knew that curved rendering lines and stuff like this would make it look and feel um, like Topi, um, and uh, it worked. And the content, I think, too, lends itself to something that Topi would do, so um, it made it probably more comparable, um, just, you know, at a glance. And then this is the other one. This is Samurai. Um, this one was much co more complicated to do, but, um, you know, obviously, again, these are from photo reference, um, but... Uh, yeah, you know, I just, I, I had a lot of fun doing this. I thought that this reverse silhouette with these two guys standing here was really clever at the time. I mean, I still do. I like it a lot. Um, got some just kind of cool stuff going on, some movie movie reference, and then this kind of cool shot of all these guys running through like the forest. So anyway, well, let's get back into Topi. But anyway, I just figured I would show that even I have an influence chain that this turned into something else a little bit differently, but I could still flex these curvy, curvy line um, renders if I want. Um, but uh, I save it for a special technique usually. But okay, so here we go. Go back into full screen mode. Man, it's so good. Oh, look at this. This is so great. <laughs> kind of Mignola, like the, the sort of wonky buildings that Mignola draws in Hellboy kind of remind me of this, or vice versa. It's really cool. Woo -hoo. Tom Coker was a big fan of this. If you know Tom Coker's work, you definitely see um, some topiisms in his stuff. Yeah, this is so cool. But yeah, flex your inner Topi. He's so easy to like. Like, his art to me is not, like, it's not challenging to sell someone on. It's like pizza. <laughs> There's not a lot of convincing. And what someone's going to say that I don't like pizza. Well, maybe you like tacos. <laughs> oh, this is so cool. Yeah, Topi is great. Really, really fun. I thought this would be a neat video. Just something a little different. Like he said, the, the influence chain was actually very demanding for me. More demanding than you might imagine on my end. It was a lot. It was a lot to um, take in. It was a lot of names to remember, and it was a lot of stuff that I wasn't really necessarily very familiar with. So it was it was pretty exhausting. At the end of at the end of that one, I was pretty beat up from doing it. So I need I need a few videos to sort of regather. <laughs> but that's I think it's good to do stuff like that. You know, go out of your comfort zone, learn some new stuff, look at stuff that you're not familiar with, and get acquainted with it, even if it's at a surface level. Um, this is the cover, and I think this is the last piece. So that probably is ten minutes. Um, if there's more, obviously we'll look at a few more, but, um, yeah, so this is the cover. This is volume one, the Enchanted World. One is like North America, one is South America. I don't remember what the other ones are, but I believe there's five volumes, possibly six. Um, and, uh, they're really cool. Oh, there's more. Bigger is better, Rich. Zoom a zoom. Have any of you attempted any stuff like this? Do you do you bring in a little topi into your stuff? And if you haven't checked out Michaluzzi or Dino Battaglia, definitely check them out too. They're they're different than Topi, but um, you may um, like like either. This almost reminded me of, it was weird, it was like, it reminds me of Jay Lee and Travel Foreman. <laughs> this travel draws some pretty crazy people. Travel, if you see this, what's up? <laughs> That's really cool. If you don't know Travel Foreman's work, you should definitely check it out. He's good. He's, he's an artist's artist, I feel. We were gonna collaborate on a book. I would still be down for that, to be honest. We were gonna we were gonna do like share the art chores. So it would be like he would pencil some stuff, I would pencil some stuff, he would ink some stuff, I would ink some stuff. It sounded really fun, but we I think we were both just too busy to do it at the time. But uh, I would still go for that. We could do it as a crowdfunded book travel. Make some money. 
Oh, this is so cool. Hey, white silhouettes. I and to be honest, I'll I'll be hundred percent honest. That white silhouette thing, although I'm sure I'd seen it in other comics, was something that I just literally made up on the fly. Um, because I kept trying the black silhouettes and it wasn't working, so I went for white. So it wasn't that actually wasn't something that I got from somewhere else. Although again, I may have seen it like in Frank Miller Sin City or something like that, but um, I didn't lift that intentionally. It just was sort of in my in my noggin. Credit where credit's due, but, you know, be honest, too. Bruce World. A wood, sorry. This is cool. Lanil Yu kind of gets this line a little bit when he renders his, when he inks his own stuff and he does, like, um, like lines. He'll do that. Oh man, this is cool. But he's done a lot of he's done a lot of character stuff too. I mean, if you actually Google him, um, you'll find you'll find more um, sort of pin up y stuff. I I kind of went for something a little bit different with this video, just so that um, uh, you know, for people familiar with it, they may not have seen this stuff as much because there's there's obviously more um, well known images and stuff like that, but. Okay, all right, you guys have a great day. I'm gonna get to work. I'm actually, I'm um, working on the, the script for Blaster Kid. It's done, but I'm actually, I'm sending it to five people to read and um, I need to prepare it for them and uh, I'm gonna get their feedback and then I'll, I'll um, make any revisions that I feel would, would help help the story and stuff like that. So I was, um, when I initially, when I initially wrote the, the script, I had a friend that's a writer read it and he was saying that uh, it, was enough story honestly for either an extra long book or possibly two books so i want to just confirm what way i should go with that that in, in terms of like what would be the best comic story and not just written story so all right i'll talk to you guys later have a great day bye <laughs>